Are you looking for ways to simplify and grow your business? Do you struggle with knowing where to focus your energy for the best return? Or are you loving your business success and looking to stay ahead of the pack through innovation and inspiration? If you've answered yes to any of the following, keep listening because today's episode is sure to inspire you. But before we get started today, I wanted to share with you my free marketing on a page template. This easy to use template will have you understanding exactly where your business is headed and the exact tactics and steps that you need to take in order to achieve your goals and your vision. Download it today from holisticvision.com.au forward slash strategy or head to the show notes for the link. Now for today's episode. Hi Shalini, thank you so much for joining me on our podcast episode today. I'd love to hear a bit more about you and if you would like to introduce yourself and let the audience know a bit more about yourself, that'd be great. Thank you for having me. Um, Well, I am a legal practitioner and I have a business known as Love Your Legals. I started it in 2014 and I work almost exclusively with women who have um, kind of reinvented and recrafted themselves into a business that they have always wanted to do, that they love. So usually they have previously worked somewhere else, had another career, had another life, been mums, raised Mm -hmm. children, still are raising children, um, may have grandchildren even, but they're all in the business of doing business. And I yeah. I provide legal advice um, and contract support. So I draft co- customised okay. contracts and I also offer templates. So, yeah, it's, it's heavy, I have, you know, a heavy in sort of focus on yeah. solopreneurship and um, small business enterprise that are, <laughs> that are women-led. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. And, you know, a lot of our audience um, are in that category. Um, So I think there's going to be a lot of value that they'll get from all your experience and expertise that you'll share with us today. Um, To start off with, I was wondering, you know, there's all this talk about legal contracts. And when you're starting off in business, it's sometimes hard to navigate um, in knowing what to have. And I know that many business owners actually then don't even have any contracts in place, especially when they're in service-based business and, you know, working with clients. What are the implications for business owners when they don't have the right contract in place? Well, I think it's more um, when you are in startup, you have a lot on your plate and it's the silent I guess the side that the big gap is usually with legals because there's such a heavy mm. focus on on marketing and yes. an equally sometimes heavy focus on on budgeting and financials. But your business needs to be set up properly. Your business needs to be registered appropriately. Your structure needs to be appropriate for your circumstances at the time of startup. Uh, so they have legal implications if they're not done properly. Um, yes. Your business name needs to be truly available. A lot of people don't do an IP. Yes. Um, and find that once they've registered their business, they actually can't use the business name. That has implications for them moving forward um, and they have to change their business name. Um, I've, I've had a few of those instances because when I draft mm. for a client, I ask them about this and yes. then I get them, you know, then I support them to literally have that conversation with, uh, you know, to, to, to ensure that their business name is actually not trademarked by someone else or something mm. similar because all, all of these things impact on your ability to do business. So it'll, it, it does, it's not fatal, but no. it just makes it, a little bit of an obstacle that you have to overcome before you can start branding, building your website, yeah, um, creating your collateral, you know, and showing up as the expert mm. that you are in in whatever um, field that you operate that in. in. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's at that startup before you even get pen to paper to have a, a, a service agreement. 
And the essential contract at this at, for any business owner, whether it's service based, is mm-hmm. well, if it's service based, it's a service agreement, and that's just another name for terms of engagement, business terms and conditions. Your con- you know, your your agreement as a contractor with your clients. Yes. Um, product based businesses, then you do need to have all of those things I just talked about. So yeah. Well. Or you put your name to a website that sells any product. Exactly. Yeah. And then you need to also consider that you you know that in all of that, the the thing that keeps the money in your pocket and stops you from leaving money on the table is your service is your terms of sale, your e-commerce policy. So a lot of businesses mm. that go online and have a product based business. Uh, get confused they think the Shopify terms cover them but it doesn't you really need to have your own terms that relate to your products and to the consumer law that you you know that applies to your um your products as well as your jurisdiction so Mm, that's really the gap there and then of course with businesses so these are women who have now up and running their services and us uh, have clients and have customers, mm. they're ready to expand and they need a team, so they need to have their contractor agreements in place. Yes. Uh, they may be licensing, so, you know, people may be using their products or uh, their courses, so you might, you know, that that's that's another okay. big thing that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is I never thought about it, that. Yeah, it's happening. Mm. And then, of course, as your business develops, you set up courses and memberships and yeah. online programs and events. So all of these require terms. Okay. Without them, you leave money on the table. You mm. are dealing with uh, faith. You are having to deal with spend time and energy and money dealing with issues in relation to your membership or your course or your event or whatever, Mm -hmm. that could easily be dealt with if you have well-drafted terms. Mm. Okay, so all of a lot can be filtered and dealt with without you ever having to speak to anybody about, you know, a a client or a you you would just refer them to the terms. And if if you're smart and you make them available, then people will be aware of them and that it'll, it'll answer their question and they will not bother you with it or not come back to you mm. because it's been resolved in a document that's legally binding. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, 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 um, that's really the levels of contract awareness or yeah. legal awareness that you need to kind of work your way through as a, as a business owner. And, of course, the biggest challenge I think is that the, the perception or, or the mindset that many women in businesses have because they're so connected to their brand. It's such a personal thing yes. that they struggle to find that approach or that contract or that service agreement template that is brand connect that that they feel connected with, you know, that they feel is connected to their brand, their business, yes. their clients, their whole messaging. Yes, uh, and because that was my next question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because they they don't find that mm. they tend to do without it okay. until such time mm. as there is an issue, or and they have a real, or they have you know, a, a, they realize that there's a lot of requests for refunds, or they realize that mm. you know their 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 uh, client relationships are, are not working as well as they had hoped or people are not paying them. So it's, I guess my my work is to, because I have such a keen interest in, in business itself, Yeah, it's very important to me that the client feels that they have ownership over their, their legals and that it is connected to them as people, to their brand and to their clients. Cause clients as when, well. Yeah, Yeah, because that's sometimes when all that disconnect happens, you don't even use the documents because you're too ashamed of them, you're too embarrassed about them, you don't understand them, Uh, they feel too bulky, they don't make sense to you, you're afraid the client will look at it and walk, you know, and say it's too hard. Or the client might just look at it and say, you're going to do something bespoke for me and yet your document looks like you've 
downloaded it from some obscure template site, right? Yeah. I mean, so and with those template sites, you know, there's so many, like you just said, um, how do you know, you know, what Well, I think them? You, you would all, you know, if you, you always protect your highest um, income stream, right? Okay. So, yeah. A te- it's dangerous going with a template for mm. your service agreement, which is why I don't actually offer one on my template. Okay. All the templates in my shop are low-risk ones. They're the ones okay. that you can't mess up. And at yeah. that stage of your business, you are not asking for a high-end investment from your client. If you're asking for a high-end investment, right, yes. and you use a template, be prepared to lose that investment because unless you have that unless you have a keen understanding of of your obligations as a, as a business owner yes. a keen understanding of consumer law you understand all the clauses in that template which are sometimes uh re- that remember the templates are generic so mm. they're to cover an, as many circumstances as possible so there's yes. a lot of information in templates that are quite irrelevant to your business and in all that okay. irrelevancy, there are a number of issues that are particular to your business that may have been left out. Okay. okay. Yes. And so you've got to understand that's important. generic mm. is as generic does. Yes. Okay. So if you <laughs> exactly. feel if you have that idea that your business could be anybody's, then yep. fine. Find a template and use it. But understand yep. this. If it doesn't stand up, it's not the template's fault. It's your fault. No. You yeah. needed to understand that that document and be sure that you're across it as if someone has explained it to you, you know, mm. that, is, that, mm. that is legally across that sort of stuff. And I don't mean that in a scary sense. It is probably yeah. the single most important document in your business, right? As a okay. business owner, you have a, you have, it's like your branding. Get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very don't true. mess with it. So yeah. in that respect, I feel... I always, you know, people say to me, do you have a bit service agreement for this? And I say, no, I don't. And I will probably never will because each one is different. Um, I'm only, you know, I draft people that feel very strongly about it. Um, that's why I have this service. If you if you don't feel strongly about it, then you're actually not really my client, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you have yeah. a, a low risk requirement, then certainly I have templates that I have drafted myself. I've used yes. for hundreds of clients already, and I feel confident enough that there is enough th- that the risk is is well managed with the use of a template. Okay. So whatever's on my website, offer offered as templates, I don't custom draft those anymore unless you ask me to. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand? And so, what yeah, because when you take it to a custom, customized document, then um, for that type of thing, a service agreement, um, what should you, as a business owner, be thinking about before we would reach out to? Um, um, yeah. So you would look at yourself you, or somebody. What I would go through and it's mm. great if you can, you know, and, and, and you should do this anyway, is be certain of your business model but okay. really be certain of your service model, like mm. how, what how, what are you doing and what are you charging? Yes. Right? Because yeah. that, that what are you doing is really important to me as a legal practitioner because it's from that that I extract your obligations. Okay, okay. To, to the consumer that makes sense. and the consumer's obligations to you, right? So it, that really helps me determine uh, and also it also helps me determine whether where you are in the level of expertise in your field, right? Mm. It also helps mm. me determine the disclaimers I need to write because yes. the, it, I, I, it's important that the disclaimers are written in connection with, with what you do and what you deliver and not just so generic that it could be 
you know, it means nothing. It's just uh, annoying lines on a on a document that you have to yeah. justify and explain to your client. So then the other flip side of that, or the the, the complementary side, is pricing, right? Mm. So there has to be a connection between, like, uh, for me because I've been. I've been a journalist, I've been in marketing. When I mm. see someone's service menu, if there is a discrepancy between the, the service and the pricing, I will raise it with you because I feel then you probably need a bit more help in making that align with your branding and, and where you are in your business in order to be, mm. for it to be a viable service um, your the terms I draft will always support it, but that yes. does not mean that if I see a hole or a gap or something that needs to be tweaked that I don't raise it with you because okay. that's what your terms show show me. Yes. Right? yes. It's, a, it's a quality assurance document that allows exactly. you to see what's going on in your particular service at any given time. So. Yeah. It's really there are there are clients that I I don't draft for and because they're not ready. Okay, they're ones where I've who, who for example um, haven't sold a service. Yes, so a lot of the time I'm not sure yet. Then yeah, they're finding their way. Yeah, now yeah, it's when I've tried to introduce templates for businesses that I feel are finding their way, okay. you know. They're, they're the coaching agreements, you know, because it's a, it's a big field, it's a big area, and coaches are usually it takes them a while to find their niche and do their That's thing. That's true, right? yes. It doesn't happen straight away. And it's a competitive field. Some, this, some are successful, but some take a while to become successful. It just depends on the level of commitment you have to making that business go for you. It's like with any other business. Yeah. So, okay, so if you starting off, say, as a coach, um, then you'd really realistically want to have seen a couple of clients and got that going so I you feel, yourself have an understanding yeah. of the process uh, and what your client's requirements would be? I, well, yeah, I think so. I think it's important that you have a taste mm. of it. Now, mm. if you, I mean, I that's why the template, I will, if you haven't done that, I will direct you to the templates. Templates, yes. Because the coaching, there's a, there's a, you know, life coaching, mindset, money, business coaching template. Like I've tried to cover as much as my conscience will allow me. I'm (laughs) not really, you know, I love my templates, but I'm not, I'm very, um, I'm very aware that the most successful business owners, especially women-led businesses, Mm -hmm. are very particular about how their contracts look. So they're they're there for the custom drafting. They just want me go through and just make sure that their understanding, my understanding and the client's understanding is in line with their messaging, their branding, Mm. uh, consumer law, you know, all these moving parts fit. So um, when you're in, when they're, when you, if you're a coach in startup, I think until you have actually um, unveiled your niche and determined how you're going to show up, then probably, I would send you, I would say to you, look, use the templates. And that, that yeah. it takes about three or four years. It does. Mm, wow, okay. Basically, it's not like you, you hmm. finish your coaching qualification and write six months, <laughs> you know what you're doing. Okay? Exactly. I, I have been watching yeah. this space for a long time and typically people change their niche mm-hmm. at least twice. They yes. change their logo even, you know, <laughs> at least twice. They change yes. their target market or their avatars at many yeah. times. Um, yeah. They Within their niche, they focus on different things. So it is, it, it, it is definitely not your life's work in the first three years, yeah. right? Yeah. The custom drafting comes in is when you have decided that that's your life's work. This is it. 
Yeah. Yeah, there are other reasons. Sense. Yeah, there are other reasons though um, that people do go for custom drafting earlier. Mm-hmm. One is that they do have anxiety around having everything perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I custom draft for those people, I make sure that it's a flexible document, that in okay. fact they're able to make changes, but it is still crafted to how they envisage, envisage themselves to be working, right? Whereas okay. the templates don't do that. The ah, template, a okay. DIY, here it is, this is all you get. Yes, um, yes, and, that's right. You, you can't know, really make changes. In that case of all, t- yeah, so if, it, yeah. if you are responsible for making it work for your business, we can only, as drafters and creators of templates and legal track practitioners, well, certainly myself, there's only so much we can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do provide support for people that purchase my templates. I don't often get a request, but sometimes yeah. people have... Um, what they don't once they get the templates, they realize that they are they're shaky, that their business model is shaky. Okay. Or their service okay. menu, it's it's their own internal confusion about their yes. business. So if, if they so then it brings want, that up yeah, for then them. they come if they come when they come back, then they mm. um the, then what happens is they're directed to the customization service, and then I take over and, and literally make it happen Just for them yeah but rewrite it yeah yeah but the 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 in early days and start up yeah. set up um you shouldn't be afraid to start because you don't have legals okay good. you should start That's good to know. you should start but yeah. you must also be aware of your communication skills with your clients and customers at the time these mm-hmm. are all things that you will need to develop as a business owner because ultimately your service agreement or your terms of sale or your licensing agreement or your membership terms or your course terms, they are platforms for negotiation, right? You own that document, you will Mm -hmm. always own that document and how you choose to enforce it or set it aside, it will be yours to do. Mm. So mm-hmm. you can't you, you can't replace working on your communication and negotiation skills with yes, any document. With that. Yeah. Mm. It's an unrealistic mm. expectation. You have to work with it's there you to support still, you to yes. have good relationships with your clients. That's yeah. And there. to be open and transparent about that. Absolutely. Process. I don't draft. Yeah. I don't draft. Yeah. I only draft trans, you know, for transparency and for fairness. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. not a good. It's it's a, against my own values to do otherwise. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I find yeah, that cause... I find that all I don't have rarely have I come across clients that would um, question that. You know. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. And, I mean, you know, you talk about being in business for a few years before getting that customization done. How often after that would you suggest businesses need to come back and maybe make any modifications to that? Would it only be if they change their business model or start looking at different um, niches and Client yeah. so, um, target audiences. I, it's interesting you say that because during COVID there was a massive pivot. Mm, yes, it was enormous. I had I yeah. had old and new clients coming to me. It was the most. It was the most busiest of times for me. It was also yeah. the most distressing of times for clients, and yes. it was just a really. People were pivoting in their businesses to do different mm. things to stay to stay relevant. Yes, and to stay um, to stay afloat or stay solvent. And they were doing this without knowing what the future was going to bring. Mm. Okay, mm. so it was like yes. a double whammy for them, really. Yeah, and, um, and so. Post COVID, so that 
So we now I'm now look seeing clients that pivoted in COVID, right? Yes. So they came to me and I drafted. And every six months I send out an, an, an email to my existing clients that said, look, yeah. I drafted for you six months ago. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that needs, is, is there anything you need to talk about? Because that, and I, and I have a link, it's actually, it's it's a mentoring link more than anything else. It's to okay. talk. So it, it's not just a, because sometimes people find it hard to make the connection like mm. they're so they're so in their business that they don't even realize that they've evolved. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that email is really to let them know that you are likely to have evolved. If there's something that is out of sync, this is the time to have a chat. We may or may not do something yeah. about it, but at least I can reassure you that you are yeah. on the right. Because it's in my interest too. Yeah. I don't want them to fall over because they didn't update no. their agreement. But at exactly. the same time, I want to be able to give them a piece to, peace of mind to say, look, from what you tell me, you're still on the same track. These these terms are, are still are current. still valid. Yeah. yeah. So that happens no, every that's good. months. Yeah. So it's yeah. really it, these are changing times. You know, in 2014, exactly. when I drafted, yeah, for when I cut when I custom was custom drafting, people did not feel they needed to review their documents, but there has been a shift since then because okay. you. The future is quite unpredictable, and um, yes. and there's so much innovation. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, you so know, much more fluidity. Yes, and moment. people, you know, mm. even in their own niches, are doing different mm. things. Right? Mm. I mean, I I launched my templates before COVID. Yeah, and it, it wasn't something that I envisaged for my business, but I did it because yeah. I was very tired of drafting. I was knew that some documents. Yeah, I, I knew that some documents were now ready for be, being offered as a template. Yeah. But uh, during COVID, I realised that the need for because because people were thinking outside the box. Yes. And being innovative, that yes. there was still like it was custom drafting was harder. It was it was I had more of a there was more of a need for custom drafting custom, than, for, okay. yeah, than for templates. The other thing yeah. too I should add about templates, I mean, there is that the a lot of I get a lot of work or clients who have purchased a, a, do, a, a, a template from, you know, mm. from the internet somewhere mm. only to find that they just cannot make it work for their business. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, it, yes. They look at it that. and they just can't. It's like forcing a square peg into a round hole. Exactly. So, yeah. So I, I do have a lot of clients that um, come to me post template purchase. Yeah. Uh, well. a bit wary, sometimes, yeah. no, no, sometimes they've done a good job, but okay. they need it refined. And yeah, I'm happy to do that. And other times there is, they're so far away from, what they want that yeah yeah I it's, we need that yeah but then we then talk yeah. about, we then reframe and, and have a look at their business again okay um, and as much as I can support them but ultimately they never wanted a template okay you know they wanted they wanted a beautiful yeah. agreement for their business a service agreement yeah or a licensing agreement or whatever, they just wanted it to make sense for their business, but they, mm. but they, you know, don't realise that until they've actually bought a template and seen That's what the it thing. looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And I offer quite, you know, like people say to me, you've got a lot of templates on your website. I actually don't <laughs> compared yeah. to other websites. I actually yeah. have, I have a very limited number and there is a reason for that. Yes. I'll only put up ones that, um uh, well they're all drafted for small business okay right they're all drafted okay. for women with an, who who have a reasonably intimate relationship with it, with their with market their and their client so it's already okay. a different it's already different it's not yes. drafted for corporations for or big for corporations small, medium, yeah. you know, small to me you know for, for medium sized businesses it's not drafted for um you know, they're not drafted for like hard sell. Mm. They're drafted mm. to be um, brand conscious, mess. You know, to be aware of 
um, and to show to show a reasonable amount of um, I guess relationship building within that document as much mm. as it is to be legally robust and to protect your mm. business and your processes. And that's that really sense. important too. I mean, yeah, you want the document to be robust as as much as you want it to be friendly. For sure. Yes. Yes, exactly. And you don't want it to be there to scare people off either because I think that yeah. some of those documents, when you read them, those agreements, you just read it and you think, oh, my God, what am I getting myself into? Yeah. This claim is a classic for that. Side. Like sometimes, you know, especially with the with the, um, with the the healing arts, mm. you know, the healing mm. and um, esoteric ther- arts, the, yeah. the spiritual work people do. Yeah. Uh, the disclaimers are very badly written. Mm. To, it's almost mm. to, to, almost they almost discredit the business. So you know, okay. I work very hard to write disclaimers that are in context that um, educate people as to why they're there in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, to ex- to explain where the practitioner is coming from. And yep. if none of that works for you, you need to leave. Yes. <laughs> As opposed to a disclaimer that says, you know, I'm not a medical service. And mm. Yes. It's, 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 um, it's only entertainment. I mean. Who, yeah, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so. not very forthcoming for a practitioner and for no, the it's very it, it, Yeah. It's, it's, Quite. It's, um, yeah, so it's part of it is part of their growth, you know, mm. part of mm. their uh, confidence and exactly. how they show up and how they feel about their business. So it's a. Yes. It's, I, I'm currently drafting a a disclaimer template for healers. Okay. Um, it's taking a while because mm. I I, need, I I get busy, but I've. I do I do want it to be a disclaimer with strength, you know, a strength yes. based disclaimer as opposed yeah. to a weakness. Giving based. away your power. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. And I think that there's a lot of value in that that a lot of health practitioners would appreciate. Um The other question that comes to my mind is I often see businesses, you know, they come up with these amazing ideas and are so innovative and they they put it out there to the world in things like Facebook groups and forums about, hey, look, I've got this idea. What do you guys think about it? You know, to me, I always wonder, well, what are the risks of somebody else going out there and taking that idea and just running with it and getting it out there to market before they did. Um, how do you go about protecting your ideas and your innovations? Okay, so there's a couple of things here. One of it one 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 of one of the things is business naivety and, and mm. we all have it. We mm. all had it when we started out and to a large extent, depending on where we're at you know, growth as business women, you know, there is always a level. We can't think of everything. And we are natural, you know, we are collaborators. We are sharers. We can't help but reach out, okay? So that's one thing. The second thing is, is that if you, there's a lot of posts on social media like the one you just described, Mm. Um, mm. I've got this great idea. Here it is. What do you think? Okay. Yes. If you fast forward, you also, or, or if you look again, you'll also see posts that say, you know, I had this really good idea and someone's copied it and now I don't know what to do. Yes. Okay, so yes, I've that seen that too. Idea. Yeah. Um, so what do you do when you have a really good idea? You, the last thing you do is to ask for public validation, <laughs> right, okay. until you have used some trusted advisors who are under an NDA 
to help you decide about the viability of that innovation or that business idea. And Mm -hmm. so, so typically when someone has an idea, they want to do something, they'll talk about it to whoever's in their circle. It's rarely their it's really someone like myself or their accountant, right? <laughs> For some reason, they just don't seem to think <laughs> that's boy, really though. an important conversation. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess, if you are if you are listening to this podcast and you're thinking about doing something in your business, look around for someone to talk to that's going to protect your privacy. Okay, yes. and use and if that and if there's someone you have a burning desire to talk to, like a business coach, like a website developer, like a branding specialist, yeah, ask them for an NDA, a non disclosure agreement, or get your own. Okay, it's very. I actually okay. have a template for that. It's a very simple yeah. agreement that puts people on notice that what you're about to talk to them is private information. Private. Yes, yeah. and yeah. and and normally people are great. They will respect that. Okay, they just don't. That's sit, good. Yeah, it, you you can't. Um, they don't disclose your information knowing that they're disclosing it. You know, unless you've actually put them on notice, which is what an NDA yes. does. Yes. So that's yeah. one thing, and then I know that the that it's a really it's very tempting to just go on social media and have 10,000 <laughs> people tell you how amazing your idea is. Yeah. <laughs> but you really need to resist that, yeah. um, that, that level at that point. After a while, when you have worked out some logistics around it, got some figures, mm. have a business plan or worked it out with a coach mm. whether this is viable, even spoken to someone like yourself or myself, Yes. yes some, and those conversations are not expensive. No, no, exactly. You know, they're very, exactly. they're very, it's, it's very important. It's a, it's a great investment to actually speak to someone that can say to you, yeah, I, I think, you, you know, it's a great idea. Before you do anything, go check out if it's, a, if your name's available. Um, exactly. Have you looked at the competition? I think it's been done before. Or do you understand that parts of this may not be, you know, like you will have difficulty under consumer law or some other legislation to get this kind of activity through? Um, So I feel like, you know, I I, I don't know, I I do try to get that message out there. Me (laughs) Me too. (laughs) (laughs) There's only so much you can do, but really you are absolutely right. This this tendency of ours of of woman yeah. to just yeah. go online and say I've got this great idea what do you think like it's really yeah. needs to be um if you've got a great idea and you do that be prepared to lose it exactly because there no, will be someone else watching who is yeah well resourced possibly already that's has it. business yeah has the funding has and is across just- it like that and and it'll be it'll appear the next thing you know, you know it. Yeah, yeah, even your business name. I've will seen appear. that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I've it, seen is a bit, that. it is um, important to have an NDA um, mm. startup. And that's why yeah. I put the template up. Yeah. That's it a is good best, idea. It is, a, it is one of the best selling templates because those women that are a little bit, you know, switched on to this. Yes. They do prefer, but. But the NDA is also useful for when you're an established business, right? Mm-hmm. And you start mm. talks with her. So, for example, this year I started. Uh, I thought my my plan this year is to work with an SEO company, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I had no zip about it, but <laughs> I, do you know, like, any time I even before I even have a conversation or give anyone access to anything in my business. They yes. have to sign an NDA. Or what that does, the main yeah. thing it does is that it lets them know that I'm watching them, mm. Mm. how they conduct themselves That's... with my business information. Yes. And no one's ever refused to sign. They've been grateful and then they've gone and bought the template themselves for their use on the website. Okay. 
So it's a, it's mm. one of those things that I'm I'm in business now nearly seven years, and any time yeah. I want to work with, I may not continue to work with them, or I may decide on another service. But before I yes. have that discussion, where they ask me questions about who my clients are, where do I get my business? Exactly. Um, what my earning ability is, what software I use, what CRM I use. That's all. That is private. It is private. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Um, that's the information that you need to put on notice that I'm sharing mm. information about my business. Mm. And, you know, confidentiality is a must. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a useful tip because I definitely know that business owners don't do that and they yeah. should be doing that because, yes, you're right, it's your private business information and if that information gets into the wrong hands, you just don't know what could happen with that and, you know, lawyers, this is your livelihood. As a legal practitioner, I have that's a, um, a practicing certificate requirement your any conversation with me either formally or informally yes right is privileged mm. that means mm. I, I can't I can have a discovery call with you yeah. and you can tell me what you want to do and t- half an hour later I can have a discovery call with a similar person but I cannot I cannot Share, um, this, share the information and say, oh, yeah. my previous call wanted to do this and this and this. Yes. Right? It, I may not even name you, but which yeah. is no-no anyway, but even exactly what we were talked about. So that's how, how, uh, um, how what our uh, obligation mm. to, for client privacy goes. goes. So, yeah. Yeah, so it is an important thing. I think I think people, women especially, you know, it's which we we are we will talk about things, and we shouldn't be restrained from that. No, right? Because if you do it the right way, yeah, we we need the information, we need the relationships, right? That's yes, our, that's correct. our strength. But yes. those relationships, the framework has to be set up at the outset. Yes. Yeah, and it needs to be relationships that are with people that you can trust with that type of yeah. information as well. Yeah, um, I think too, even even if you know, even if it's some, if you've gone outside your usual, um, like when you do something in your business that is serious up leveling, like this SEO stuff. Was, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I was very nervous about it, and I almost forgot about the NDA. Oh, okay. Right, and but no, I did remember at the last minute. Oh, I'm going Good. to talk about my con- even my concerns, my my fears about mm. what we're doing next is privileged. Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah. expect. I don't want it to be discussed with anybody else or with no. another firm or whatever. And neither should yeah. you. Yeah. No, exactly. I think we need to value what we know and our knowledge and our business and our business models mm. as well more um, and yeah. realise that it is it is something of value not only to us but to the outside world yeah. too. So that's where the and risk I, I guess if, if, if you don't express that this information is about yes. you can't expect other people to no. automatically respect it, you know. Exactly. Have different start agendas. They've got a different starting point. They've got a different end yeah. point. You need to ra- you need to set the set the margins, set the boundaries. Yes, yes, from the start. Yeah. No, right. that totally makes sense. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, before we wrap up, was there anything else that you think is would be useful for our audience to hear as small business owners? Um, look, don't be afraid to start, yeah. right? When you Love are that. working with professionals in your business, such as myself, yourself, people who come yes. to you with knowledge and, and, and interest and understanding, yes, look at them as mentors as well. You know, mm. Mm. It, 
and don't forget that when, whenever you whenever you see getting good advice as a cost, change your thinking to consider it an investment. You know, mm. a cost is paying for staplers. Yes. <laughs> and printer ink, right? But talking to <laughs> exactly. someone like myself or to you or to a good, you know, an accountant or someone that is going yeah. to help you establish the, the, the foundations that are going to help you grow as a person yeah. and, 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 you know, enable you to, to run your business and make decisions. That's yes. investment. That's not a cost. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And finally, exactly. you know, in relation to your contracts, um, it's best to have a talk about it. Mm. It's not always a given that you will need to have a service agreement custom drafted. It may be that you're already using something that can be refined. It mm -hmm. could be that a template yeah. is suitable. I can't tell you that until I've spoken to you. Had the conversation, yeah, yes. Yeah, until I've had a conversation yeah. and I've checked you out, just the same yeah. as you check yeah. me out, you know? Exactly, exactly. No, that makes total sense. And I think that as a small business owner, that actually puts your mind at rest to know that there's there's options available for wherever you are in your journey as a business owner. Um, and 100%. that, you know, it, it's yeah. flexible and you can adjust it as you grow and as you move and change with your business as well. That's so right. Don't be afraid you. to start. Yes. That's the biggest thing. You know, I think that a lot of people just get stuck in their heads and they think, oh, my God, no, I can't. I need to wait. I need to wait. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then yeah. they just don't get out there and they don't start. And it is the biggest thing. The biggest learning comes from when you do start. Um, yes. And the um, confidence comes from when you start that, as that's well. That's right. So, okay. yeah. Don't stay in startup land as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not your forever home. No. <laughs> that's it. You do need to leave it at some point. <laughs> I agree. You Thank you out. so much. Yeah. Um, You're no, welcome. There's so much value, Shalini. I really appreciate it. Um, I've loved and I've learned so much. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening today. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you find value from today's episode. And remember, if you've got friends and colleagues looking for inspiration as they grow their business, share this podcast with them. Follow me on Instagram at Holistic Vision Consultancy or check out my website, holisticvision.com.au. Until next week, to your success, my friend.